Hi and welcome to this video about the Revolution Slider. In this specific video I want to show you how you can create a really cool and easy morphing effect with the Revolution Slider. This is just one more little thing you can do with this great slider plugin for WordPress. Okay, so we get started on the dashboard and uh, I expect from you of course to have installed the Revolution Slider. And uh, as always, I'm working with the Cepheid theme, which should be familiar to you if you've seen some tutorials of mine before. Okay, so what do you need for this tutorial? Well, you need one image, which is uh, any kind of image that you like, and yet you would like to have as a slider background uh, onto your website. So I just chose a very uh, easy and very wonderful image of a beach situation and it is very nice in color, very blue and uh, yeah, well, you can see some palm leaves here on the top. Now, what you need to do is to copy this image uh, or open it with any uh, image program like Photoshop or anything like this and make it into black and white. So just get rid of the color and have two files in the end uh, on your computer that we are going to work with. And the morphing effect, uh, as you can already expect right now, will be from a black and white photo to a color photo and will look very similar to this effect that I'm using here. Okay, so it is quite simple with Revolution Slider, but I try to make the steps as slowly as possible because I know some of you have not much experience with the Revolution Slider and I want to be everyone uh, on board. Now we are going to go, we, we're going to start at the Revolution Slider menu here on the left. And um, I have one slider here from a previous tutorial saved in my slider settings. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a new slider, which is already telling us here. And we click on this big plus. Then the slider settings load and it already moves down a bit to uh, to this second point. And this is as always where we start uh, to create our new slider. Uh, we just have to enter any name, any name. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just enter morph here. So later on I can uh, easily tell what this um, slider will be about or what kind of slider it will be. Then, very important, we have to save it, of course. and. Uh, well, maybe this was already a bit too quick for some of you. We go into the slider settings again. Basically, all I did was copying the um, short code that was up there. So I go back to the slider settings. Unfortunately, the menu in the resolution slider is sometimes a bit uh, confusing. So here on the very right, we got this short code. It says here title and short code, and we can copy it. So we basically say copy, we mark it and copy and uh, then we have it in our clipboard. Then we go in the WordPress to the page settings and we go to the page where we want to add the slider to. I already created one page earlier here. We I just called it my slider and uh, very simple. Uh, in my case, I'm using the Visual Composer again as a very great page builder if you're interested. And if you're, if you're not using this, you would be basically in this classic uh, view where you just have some text um, editor here. And here you would just enter your shortcode. But in my case, of course, is uh, one more step in between. I have this row here and I have a text block. And very similar fashion, I just add the text block here. Then I save the changes. No, sorry, I didn't enter the text block. I actually paste the short code of the revolution slider in here. And it says revolution slider alias morph. And this is how the revolution slider settings understand that this short code is actually about the slider that we just created. Now, of course, there's another way if you're using this visual composer to add a slider um, to your page you would uh, have to go into this add element section here and you would uh, be able to search for a revolution slider and then you would place this element instead of this text block in this row but when i tried this sometimes it just didn't recognize the sliders that were saved in my system so uh, because this works very fine with the text block i always stick to this 
then of course I update my page. Uh, as a little side note, uh, yeah, depending on the theme you're using, you might have additional ways to include your slider. Sometimes you have some page objects down here um, where you actually have a certain special slider uh, option where you can select any of the sliders that are saved from the revolution slider. But anyhow, this way that I just showed to you works very fine. Okay, now of course we don't have a slider. There's nothing, no slides in so far. So in our slider settings, we go to the slide editor. Takes a second. And then here, the very first one is the global layer, static layer, which basically means it's the layer that will be visible on all slides, depending or independent on which slide is available at the moment. So you, if you want to have one text visible on all slides, you don't have to copy and paste it from one slide to another. You can just edit here on the, um, on the global layer. So you would add a new layer and so on and so on, like I showed in the general revolution slider tutorial earlier on. Now we want to add a new slide now. We have a new blank slide here. And the source of our uh, content basically for this slide will be a background image. And uh, so we select this one, go to change image. And uh, early on, I already uploaded these two images, as you can see here. Uh, always make sure they're not too large. Actually, uh, 70, 60 kilobyte is quite good uh, because it would take up a bit too many resources. And uh, yeah, of course, make sure the images are the same size is 1200 times 500 in both cases and the first image that I want to select for the first slide will be the black and white one. I just click on insert and save my slide. Now we can uh, already preview our page and have a look at the slider as it is with just one slide. And uh, yeah we can already see it is working but we can also already see we forgot one setting. So let's change to the slider settings. I'm sorry if this is a bit too quick for some of you, but I hope you can follow me. Uh, of course, you can stop the video at any time or preview and um, yeah, rewind the video again. Um, to change what we just saw, to change the, uh, the white parts on the right hand side here of the sliders and also on the left, we go to the general settings, as I said, and we go down and we say full width and you can see here on the preview this will change the slider to a full width slider very simple yeah one other option that I always forgot or basically didn't use and um, instead of going to my site where I of course get the uh, perfect preview basically for my slider which uh, which I have now I, I can also see the navigation which is basically not here or the logo text which uh, replaces kind of the settings here, then uh, this will be of course one preview. And we can also see one thing. I mean, we we have this uh, slider implemented, the photo is working, but somehow almost nothing is visible from it. <laughs> Why is that? There should be another setting that we need to change. And uh, this is the slider layout. We can see here the layer grid size is larger than what we have or larger than our image that we used. Remember our image is 1200 times 500. So we have to make sure that the on the desktop um, the setting should also be or should match the size of our image. So if we go to 1200 times 500 and uh, then save the setting, I can actually show you now the functionality that I forgot always or didn't use. I click here on the preview on this little uh, glasses here and then I actually also have a full preview of our slider and uh, we can also change here from the different device settings and we can see all oh, this is how it would actually look on a on a mobile device but um, I don't think it's that helpful well anyway what you can see here is uh, yeah, how this slide in general looks and if if there was more than one slide you would also see it looping. I still prefer this um, preview on the 
page because you just get a more realistic view of it. For some reasons, I actually don't understand. Now we have it. Okay, I was zoomed in. This is uh, the problem of the, <laughs> the weird Apple mouse I'm using. Anyway, now we get a really good preview of our slider, which is not a slider so far. I want to stress again. And uh, we quickly go to the slide editor again and add the second image as a new slide. So we go to add slide and add a blank new slide. As you might guess, we take the second image as the source or the content for this second slide. And we save it. And now we have a very normal functional slider which uh, has two slides. So we have one here and basically the effect that we want is already there. And in a second it should change. The normal looping thing works. Here you can see it. We have a morphing effect working. So from black and white it turns into a colorful photo. I think this is really beautiful and a very nice effect that you can use. And now it turns black to black and white again, which might not be what you want to achieve. So. Um, we go to our slider settings again. We actually have to return to the slider editor again, uh, to the slide editor, but for now we go to the general settings of the slider. And we say stop slider after number of loops, after amount of loops. So we have to toggle this second option on and say, yeah, amount of loops should be zero. So it should not loop at least one. It should not loop at all. And it should stop at slide two, which of course only makes sense. It cannot stop at one after amount of loops. Well, it could be, but then we would never see the second slide. And uh, we click on save again. And um, the slide duration should also be changed. Basically, we don't want to see the first slide for such a long amount of time. We just want to see it for, I think it's three seconds. I'm always confused because uh, it doesn't feel as long when it says 9000. It doesn't feel as long as nine seconds. Am I right? I don't know. Anyway, no time for that. We go back to our slider and preview it one more time. It should be much slower now in the first slide. Here the black and white one. And now it changes to the colorful one and here it stays it stops there will be no loop and we have this colorful image not as a slider but basically as a background so we have a very very nice morphing effect but there is one little setting that we can uh, make this effect even stronger and even nicer for this setting we have to go to slide number two we didn't go to slide number two we actually have to go to this arrow here in the middle also another confusing setting if you ask me um, and we have to go to slide animation now the default slide animation is fade and this is great we want to have it fading because that's the morphing effect that we wanted as you saw and here in the animation duration we want to uh, change it we want to change it to a three second fading uh, transition we save the slide and we re uh, preview our slider again. Black and white, one, two, three, color, and a very, very slow and very nice morphing effect. Very beautiful, and now we have this colorful background color image. I think this can be very useful, especially if you compare two images maybe to another. First of all, of course, to get attention, yeah, the first image yeah, doesn't look as great. And the second image is beautiful and you have this changing effect. It can be useful for, for some situations. Or of course you can manipulate these two images even more. That not only the color changes, but also certain elements change. Some details are different. Or some color are not there yet or anything like this. So feel free to try out. I think this is a very useful setting and uh, yeah, if you, if you have any questions, please uh, write in the comments and uh, also it would be wonderful if you subscribe my channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.